We want to thank everyone for joining us here for the semifinal postgame press conference of the 2023 CUSA Basketball Championships presented by Total Care. We're joined by UAB head coach Andy Kennedy and guard Jordan Walker. We will make sure attending media here in Frisco have the ability to ask their questions first, and then we will move to our Zoom audience. We ask that you please remain on mute until called upon, and please utilize the raised hand function to let us know you have a question for either our head coach or student athlete. And as a reminder, UAB will take on Florida Atlantic tomorrow in our championship game at 7.30 p.m. live on CBS Sports Network. We'll begin now with an opening statement from UAB head coach Andy Kennedy before then opening it up to questions. Coach, whenever you're ready. Uh, thank you. Um, proud of my guys. I thought our approach out of the gate was picture perfect. I wish for the first time in my coaching career that games were six minutes long. Uh, I felt, man, well, we were good for six minutes. And then we realized that North Texas is a good basketball team. They've won a school record, I believe, coming into today. And Grant's done a tremendous job. So we knew they were going to fight and claw and scratch, and that's exactly what they did. They made a push at us. We finished the half solidly. We were not happy in the locker room because we didn't feel like we finished um, defensively as good as we should have. Second half came out, um, took a couple of punches, threw a couple of punches, and then at the end, I've asked my AD to hire a special teams coach because obviously I suck at it. Um, you're not supposed to throw it to the other team at the end of the game. Uh, wanted to keep it entertaining for our viewers on CBS. We appreciate them for being here. <laughs> and um, I'm just proud of my guys. A good, solid effort. Now, sit down. Now, look, we led for 37 minutes against one of the best defensive teams in all college basketball. So, um, happy to fight another day. Thank you very much, Coach. We're going to open it up to the, the room for questions. Brett, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, just real quick. Uh, Jordan, it seemed like you had some epic battles with Tyler Perry throughout your career and throughout this season. Yeah, was, this a, was this a personal one for you, the match with him? Um, I've, I've, don't be honest. Okay. Say no. Nah, nah, it wasn't. <laughs> Wait, for real? No, I'm kidding. Nah, if, if, I'm, if, he, well, if I'm being honest, I mean, yeah, it was. I mean, I was a little disappointed I didn't get player of the year, but I mean, no disrespect to him. He's a great player, and I, I told him that after the game. I, I love playing against him. He's probably, like, I, best player, especially a little guard that I've played against, like, my entire college career, you know. And um, But I, I love matching up with him. It's fun because he's hard to guard, and, and I'm hard to guard, you know, and he makes extremely tough shots, and I make extremely tough shots. And, and he, he leads his team to victories, and, and I do too. But I, I definitely took this one personal because I was a little upset about it. But, I mean... Uh, the, the biggest goal is to get the championship and, and get dancing. So we got another one tomorrow, and that's what I'm focused on right now. So you were, it was a little, little bit upsetting when you didn't get the, the player of the year and that kind of thing? I mean, absolutely. Uh, when when I, I feel like I played extremely well this year. I feel like I played better than last year, you know. But, I mean, I got injured and I got hurt, and I sat up for them five games, and, and I, that probably played a, a huge part into it. But, I mean, like I said, kudos to him, especially uh, in their coach. Uh, they're a great team. They're a great program. But, um. I mean, I definitely did have a little chip on my shoulder today. He got his headline. <laughs> Jordan, what is it about this building, this stage, that brings out some of these incredible performances from you? Um, I love the bright lights. I truly do. And uh, since day one, he put the ball in my hands, and he, and he rocks for me, good, and, good or bad, you know? And obviously, luckily, I, I play really well here, but... Uh, um, I just love it. I, I love the bright lights. I truly do. I love being on a big stage and show people how, how good I am because I've always been underestimated and I feel like not appreciated enough my entire college career until I came here and, and played for this man right here. So um, I, I would just say I really do love these bright lights. I truly do. And I feel like that. the bigger the game, the better I play. Were you a Cowboys fan growing up? No, no way. You I don't really like Gi football for real. Giants? No, I don't really like football, Coach. I ain't going to lie to say, you. I thought maybe you were. Uh, you do know this is where the Cowboys practice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I know. the point. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know that. <laughs> Sorry, you yeah. talk about the, the transfer, the, the impact of your transfer players. You know, going from jail and all over. Those... Yeah, you know, it's the it's the new way. You know, it's about roster construction. Um, the days of having balanced classes and this many freshmen and sophomores; those days are are sadly over. Uh, now it's just about putting together the best team that you can have, and we did it in year one. Uh, the guy, the only guy that's left uh, of that class from the transfer portal is Trey Jemison, our big kid who's been terrific for us. Um, and then in year two, we picked up two guys I thought that were, have been great in this tournament. Obviously, Jelly and K.J. Buffett, I think, has been he was really good last night. And he's kind of our defensive captain because of his IQ and his ability to, to help to direct that end of the floor. He goes for 13 and 7, and I thought he was efficient, made some hard plays for us. 
And then, you know, this year we, we've dipped back in there and we've gotten contributions from a number of different guys. It's just it's the way of college basketball today, and it's the way that we'll continue to trend. Coach, like you mentioned, you know, punches going both ways in this game. How did you keep your you know, team's composure throughout the game and, and uh, keep them together to the end? I know this is going to be crazy, but I've been doing this a long time, and typically when you get off to such a great start, there's going to be a little bit of a letdown. And, and we felt it. Now, we had such a tremendous start. I don't know what it was, but we were up 20 points maybe at one time. Just incredible out of the gate. That's unrealistic to think we're going to continue to do that for 40 minutes. And there was a little bit of letdown. Good teams make plays. We, we've got good players who make plays, and they've got good players who make plays. Then in the second half, I thought we were in complete control, and we just kind of got unglued at the end, uh, but made the plays that we needed to play. All right, we're going to shift over to our Zoom audience. We've got our first question here from Evan Dudley at AL.com, and then we'll follow that up with Steve Irvine. So, Evan, go ahead. All right, uh, first, Andy, uh, obviously, Jelly had a great game, but, uh, you know, you look at just kind of the end, you know, just how, uh, you know, it's kind of poetic that, uh, you know, Tate and Lovin goes in there and scores those uh, last five, six points, you know, especially that dunk. You know, Jelly starts off out of that timeout with that big three and then kind of Lovin and Gaines carried her home. Well, you know, they were running two people at Jelly at the end of the game, probably from about the 12-minute mark on. They were they were really putting a man and a half on him. And then if he tried to penetrate, that second guy would come to him. Typically, that second guy was coming off Tave or KJ or Ty when he was in the game. So that's where the, that's where the action was. I, I thought Jelly had a tremendous floor game. He scores 32. He's got six rebounds. It's got to be a career high. That's got to be wrong. I'm going to check the tape. And he had six assists and, and only one turnover. I thought he was making the right decisions. Uh, and I thought, honestly, he tried defensively, which, again, I can't say every day. Uh, uh, I, I, no, I, I, thought he, I, I thought he had a tremendous game and, um, and, and got the ball to the right people. And we had to have some other people step up. And Tate was tremendous with a couple of finishes, uh, as was KJ. Yeah, yeah, that, that's my boy. That's my boy. And uh, and if you watch us play, I mean, I, I know where he's at at all times. You know, he's like, it's like with Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire. It's like, he knows where he's at at all times. So I, I'm like that with KJ. And he finds me more times than not. So I knew uh, they were going to obviously come out to me because they think I'm going to shoot no matter what. That's what everyone does. And I seen him right away, so I just threw it right back to him. And he, and he got that dunk. All right, we'll move on to Steve Irvine. Um, it's really not when you got a coach right here who's constantly yelling at you. So, uh, nah, but I mean, when we got up that much, I mean, that's what we were preaching the whole time is to come out the gate and be the tougher team and be the more physical team and be the more mentally tough team as well. But, um, uh, obviously, with a great team like that, it's hard to hold the lead like that. But when you're up like that, you, you try to just get smart possessions. You try to just keep that lead by by getting the best shots possible, you know. And and uh, I think we they did a great job of, of like sending two at me and, and trying to get it out of my hands. Um, but like I said, like he said, um, definitely my teammates stepped up tonight, and uh, it definitely showed that we're more than just me. And people constantly talk about Jelly, Jelly this, Jelly that, but it, it, this team is way bigger than me, way bigger than me. And we have a lot of people on this team that are capable of, of, of taking over a game at any moment, and you've seen that tonight. Andy, Andy, when you play these guys, and y'all both have talked about playing physical today, but how, how important is it to play Yeah, I think I've said this before, Steve, and I've told Grant this to his face. I think they're the most disciplined team in our league. I think they know who they are and they stay um, within uh, their their formula, and they've been very, very successful, and that's obvious. So we knew that we had to come out and, and op we call it operating right, doing things fundamentally sound. We practice it every day. You got to trust the work. We try to create good habits, and I thought we were terrific uh, in the first half. They they. We established an offensive rhythm early with movement, with cutting, with making shots. And defensively, it was as good as we have been in a long time. That's the greatest area. But since Jelly's been back, I guess now we're 10-1 and one, um, in, in those 11 games since he's been back. And, and our biggest improvement has been on the defensive side of the ball. And tonight was another step forward in that way. And it's going to have to be really good tomorrow. We're playing another extremely talented team, a team in FAU. 
uh, that's got more offensive options, and we're going to have to be dialed in defensively. And then final thing for me, we can get back to what Jelly is. How, how confident is this team right now? How confident are you guys as a team? Um, I, I would say we're extremely confident. But at the same time, we're extremely humble because uh, we've been here before and we can't get too ahead of ourselves because we still got to play tomorrow. But uh, I, I would say we're, we're definitely confident. You know, I mean, you never want to lose that confidence. You're supposed to believe you're the best team uh, every time you step on the floor. And each individual is supposed to believe they're the best player who steps on the floor. But you still have to remain humble because you, at the end of the day, you have to respect everybody you play. And FAU is a great team, uh, great players, and they're extremely well coached. So uh, we're going to have our hands full. But as long as we follow the game plan and listen to what this, this guy says, I, I, I think we can, we, can, we can get it done. All right. Thank you both so much for thank your you. time. Thank Congratulations you. again, and good luck tomorrow.